Hi everyone, I'm Kat from the Littlestown Library of the Adams County Library System. Welcome to our virtual Summer Quest 2020 program. Uh, this is part one of our stop motion animation video series, so glad you could join us for that. Uh, today I'm going to give a brief introduction to how stop motion animation works and some of the different subtypes. So stop motion is a technique used in animation where slight adjustments or movements made to an object are photographed individually and then strung together to create the illusion of movement. A movie is basically a series of still images individually photographed and then played in sequence so fast that the human eye interprets it as movement. Now, each second, one second of film requires 24 frames, which film was originally produced on film. So each roll of film has little images on it, little individual shots, those are called frames. And a, if there's 24 frames in one second of film, then that means that a 90 minute film which is 5,400 seconds, is comprised of 129,600 individual pictures. And again, when the film is played back, it moves fast enough that you can't see the individual frames. With two-dimensional or 2D animation, this effect, this illusion of movement, is created um, making drawings that are slightly different from each other, and that creates the illusion of movement. So you see this in Disney films like Snow White, Cinderella, and Sleeping Beauty, or in cartoons like Rocky and Bullwinkle, or Looney Tunes. You can also see it uh, in flip books. And this is called uh, traditional, classic, cell or hand-drawn animation. And sometimes this is mixed with live action, um, and other times the film is um, entirely animated this way. If you wanted to do a live action film, but needed special effects involving sea monsters or flying saucers, then you probably wouldn't use hand-drawn animation. You would need something three-dimensional. So before computer-generated imaging, or CGI, your only options were to, one, dress someone up in a costume, which limits the kinds of monsters you can do and generally looks kind of cheesy, or you can use stop-motion animation. And there are several types of stop-motion, depending on the materials and the type of objects that you're using. Puppets, models, clay figures, um, which have movable joints, or are built around an armature or wire skeleton are the most common, and this can be called puppet or model animation. Sometimes you'll hear it called that. You see a lot of this in the classic 1950s science fiction and fantasy films by uh, animator master Ray Harryhausen, such as 20 Million Miles to Earth and The Seventh Voyage of Sinbad. Stop motion that's specific specifically uses figures made out of clay is often called clay animation or claymation for short. You see this in films like Chicken Run or Coraline and television shows like Wallace and Gromit or Gumby. And if you use paper cutouts, uh, fabric or photographs, something that you don't see as much in a lot of uh, modern animation, then the technique is called cutout animation. Um, and a good example of this is the oldest surviving fully animated uh, feature length film um, is uh, from 1926 called The Adventures of Prince Ahmed. And that is all done with um, paper silhouettes cut out and they're animated. So it's an amazing technical achievement. Um, I highly recommend it. And then there are some modern films like Kubo and the Two Strings that use a combination of model or uh, claymation and they combine that with um, or enhance it with CGI effects. However, 
any kind of object from books on a shelf to Legos and toy army men can be used to create stop motion animation. But you just need a few things to get started. First, you need a camera. You can use a regular camera, a smartphone, or a tablet. As long as it can take still images, you're in business. Two, or second, you will need a tripod. Um, you may not need to use specifically a tripod, um, but you need something to keep it steady and motionless while you're taking the photographs. So that could be a tripod or just a stack of books. Third, you need objects to photograph. As I said before, lots of different things around the house can be used to make a short stop motion film. The only limit is your imagination. And fourth, you need patience. Stop motion takes a lot of time and attention, but you can make some really cool things using very little. Some extra things that aren't necessary, but can help. Uh, a light source. Uh, this is not a requirement, but it does help. Uh, it makes the transitions uh, between movements look more seamless. You just have to be careful that you don't uh, get in between the light and what you're photographing. Otherwise, you can cast some shadows and that will mess up the animation. And also a stable, quiet place to work. While you can do stop motion animation outside, it's a lot harder to make things look natural because you can't control the lighting or the sound or the weather or other aspects of the environment. Most stop motion uh, done in film is made on a stage or a set or a table where you can set up your objects and trust that they will remain stationary while you're photographing and that you won't get rained on or have your cat knock them over in the middle of a shoot. But the most important thing is to have fun. People of all ages have made some pretty inventive short films, and hopefully by the end of this video series, you'll be making one as well. So we are going to have a virtual stop motion festival air on the Littlestown Library Facebook page on August 4th. So if you would like your stop motion short film to be showcased, uh, please send your submissions to littlestown at adamslibrary.org by 8 p.m. on Sunday, August 2nd. If you have any specific questions about topics discussed here in this video on part one, um, you can register for a Zoom Live Q&A um, Tech Talk, which will take place um, this Thursday at 3 p.m. Uh, please register online through the events page on adamslibrary.org. And next Tuesday, we will be showcasing a how-to and demonstration of stop motion using clay, otherwise known as claymation. So we will see you then. Bye.